So let's bring up policies beyond partisanship. Policies beyond partisanship. Here we go. Take it away now. Uh, oh, what? Clicker? But you can use the mic or hold on. Both okay. work. Okay, I'm a pacer, so I'm going to. I am going to hold a mic. My name is Noelle Bivens. I have traveled here from San Francisco, California. Uh, a couple of you guys I know were with us there at the San Francisco Hack. I am the lone representative of a fantastic team who took on this challenge of trying to bridge this partisan divide that's stopping things from happening. So just to kind of, I'm going to spend a moment just to bring, oops, I can get this, there we go, bring everybody kind of up to speed from what happened there. Um, we, we uh, as you see here, we kind of broke it, broke it down into three elements. Um, it basically came down to that the representatives were being judged if they even attempted to reach across the aisle. Therefore, they were just dismissing people who were potential partners as the uh, team before me was uh, addressing the tech side of that. Um, and therefore, we, we have to open some kind of a space. There's no space public, there's no space in the media, and there's no space in Congress right now for very much cross-partisan action. So, what we submitted there was a two-step proposal. The first part was a social program to foster the relationships between representatives across the aisle there. And the second part was a tech piece that modernized the legislative writing process, which is a challenge we've seen repeatedly throughout these hacks. Um, for the, the purposes of here, I kind of took the judge's feedback. I took the tech piece out because I am actually not a tech person. <laughs> and I took the social program. Now that, if I can get up to this next one here, that actually was a three part. Um, the first step was uh, to have a cross-partisan orientation with new members, kind of get them working together more right off the bat. Um, the second part uh, included a, a mentorship program along those same lines to kind of get them partnered with a seasoned person across the aisle. Um, and then the third piece to it was, it was born off of a, a, an idea that was submitted with the challenge for a uh, cross-partisan retreat, which our immediate thought was how, um, who's going to pay for that? Nobody's going to want to pay for that. But we did kind of work that down into being uh, just two, you know, one, one from each side of the aisle going out and touring their districts together, talking to their people. So <clears throat> because of where we are in the legislative, you know, or in the election cycle, we can't really do a whole lot with those first two there. Um, so we took that third piece and we started researching and we discovered that there's actually already a caucus called the United Solutions Caucus. Some of you may or may not be familiar with that. Um, these were freshmen representatives who came in in 2012 and right off the bat said we will work together to address the budget crisis that was sending us into sequestration. So working off of that already existing framework, we kind of made a little dream team <laughs> of who we could uh, ask to help us out with the pilot to kind of test this out, see how we can get it to go. Um, it provides a lot of opportunities we can get this next one up here. Um, Tulsi Gabbard, many of you are familiar with her, an Iraqi war veteran, phenomenal representative, true servant leader. Um, partnering her up with Andy Barr of Kentucky to show some of the, um, some of the, ooh, I'm way over time, I'm sorry guys. Um, to show some of these uh, different contrasting partnerships that they have to deal with. They have different, you know, all different demographics, all different, you know, uh, Queens, New York, North Dakota. So you guys kind of get the picture there. 
So um, a quick conclusion. Basically, this is our first step towards creating that discussion space. It gives us a chance to re-engage some people who either weren't really participating in the first place or who um, maybe just have kind of gotten disenfranchised. And it also gives us a platform to introduce the Hack from Congress concept out into different areas. So with that, I'm going to take any questions you guys have. Thank you. We got a question from Josh Tarber. Hey, so what do you think are the causes of partisanship? Um, there are numerous ones. Uh, a lot of it is really just, oh, I'm sorry. A lot of it is really just, it's sort of become the culture there. But um, as we see, there are members who are creating this little subculture, and I believe that was celebrating that. And, and you know, just we, we celebrate the people who get the news or the people who make the, the, the bad reports and who, you know, won't work with the other side regardless. So I think it's a matter of kind of helping guide that conversation and, and getting away from the sensationalism and down to the business of government. Any other questions? Dan? So I used to work in the Senate, and I actually think there is a mentorship program that's cross-partisan uh, for the Senate. I know you're focused a little bit on the House here, but I think the idea is that a freshman member gets paired with a mentor for both the Democratic and Republican Party in the Senate. Uh, I don't know how, if the impact of that has been <laughs> too huge, con considering there's still uh, some pretty massive partisanship in that body. But my question is basically how uh, politically, would you go about creating a mentorship program in the House? Who would you approach? Are you approaching individual members to connect them and then blowing it up from there? Or um, we really haven't gotten into developing that piece of it just yet because, like we, you know, like I was saying, it's, you know, that's something that's ideally we would do with like a new incoming class, kind of begin it with the orientation. We have the opportunity now to begin building a coalition. So these are all potential mentors for incoming freshmen in 2016. So this is beginning that relationship building, beginning that practice of having you know, people who will say yes. These are people who walked in the door saying, yes, we want to work across the lines. So I believe that they're, they are a good starting point. There are 30 plus members in this caucus. They all can probably bring in a couple people into it. So I think it would, um, it would it, as long as we have those initial yeses, I think it would sort of create that momentum. Great. So I just wanted to ask, um, did you also consider the role of staff? In Congressional staff. Yes. In, okay. uh, in, in some of the... As much in, as... Yeah. I mean, you know, um, you, you focused quite a bit on the members, and we talked quite a bit about the members, but, um, you know, trying to build some of those bridges within staff relationships. Um, we did not focus on that too much. Part of that is we um, had a... a a, a former intern who kind of we were taking feedback from and she was saying that a lot of that already exists um, you know the, that staffers are already kind of working together more so maybe than some of the members are to get things done um, which is kind of you know where we took a cue of okay how are you guys creating that culture and how can we you know lead lead without authority is what <laughs> what we used to call it in in management um, you know, just sort of setting that. And that's the great thing about this. It, it gives us an opportunity to model the behavior. We can, you know, we can bring in Google and YouTube and create some, you know, a pack, digital package to get it out there, you know, and, and make people aware that this is happening. Cool. Thank you so much. Give it up for Noel. Thank you, Noel.